Hi, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to make a folio. Um, this I made this one first, but I made a few mistakes. So the folio is made from cardboard and it's been painted and it has some gesso, Mod Podge and matte medium just to provide some sturdiness to it and some vintage look to it. I have um, made the right side the wider spine so that when the notepad and the pocket have been filled then they actually have room to grow without changing the shape of the folio. So like I say I did this one first and I put the paper on after painting and realised that actually you're going to get a much stronger vintage look if you do the painting after putting the papers down. I also kept getting it the wrong way around. So this is a bit rough here because this is actually, this was a pocket that I've put on upside down. So I've still got to fix this to make it a little bit more attractive. This is just a little notepad and I've bound it in on the side so that it grows this way. And I've just put a little brayer, some little flowers, and that is it. This one is the one that you actually see on camera being made. Now I've put a little bit too much Mod Podge on it and need to give it a bit of a sanding because it's kind of collected in places. I have bound this one with string and a wax stamp seal. Wax seal stamp. Um, I tried to use the browns and blues because that's the colour of the papers. However, the blue is a bit vibrant, but that's okay. Um, this one, because the paper that I used had a fruity theme to it, um, you know, an old still life look to it, that's what I've used within the notepad. I put this on upside down over here so that's why there is <laughs> coverings on the pocket and the pocket is now just a little bit tight but that's okay and this is just a little bit of washi tape sticker and um, this is just Mod Podge in here anyway this is the little notepad and I have bound it here that's underneath um, that is an upside down vase <laughs> and that is it and I just think this is beautiful and very sturdy this has been made this morning however this was made yesterday and it's extremely sturdy please don't break it first <laughs> so um, and I, I think they could hold a lot more than they are just now Anyway, I hope you enjoy the video and I hope to see you again soon. So I have my piece of cardboard that is slightly smaller than this one, height wise, not width wise, which is quite good because then it means I can mimic the lines. So I'll have my pen here. I actually put a black line down the score lines. And what I found was for putting the aging effect in the score lines, having the black underneath was actually quite helpful. So I actually went for inches with this just purely because it was easier to count ten and a half than it was to count twenty six. <laughs> so I took it to the nine and the nine and a quarter. I should really start at the one inch actually. So at four inch, I made a mark. At five inch, I made a mark. Nine inch and nine and a quarter inch. And then I'll just do the same at the bottom. Four inches, five inches, nine inches, nine and a quarter inches. I'm actually using a clip 
calligraphy pen so I'm holding the nib in a vertical fashion which is actually quite helpful at keeping my line accurate or as accurate as I'm able to achieve so I have a scoring set um, I don't have a scoreboard but I have the pens to do it with I got these in the range for about £2 so that end was a bit big for it it's a little bit difficult doing this to be fair because I do feel like I'm breaking the book but almost breaking that first layer is helpful to creating the sharp edges it just feels like you're damaging it which I suppose technically you are but irreparably so I mean you could use a pen for this I will try it mm. I don't actually have a, a pen to hand it'll work with a pen a wee bit there so that's it right there that's just a little bit here I just want to bend it both ways however this is the inside there we go so the next step instead of doing the painting I'm actually going to put the not the notepad or the pocket but everything else I'm going to put down so that we can paint over the edges Going to do the outside first. I found these inside the book, so they will do the job perfectly. Now I'm not too bothered about keeping it straight. If anything, I actually think it would be quite helpful to have some torn edges because it's going to add to the worn effect when the paint goes on That's lovely getting out my trusted matte medium and my rather horrible knife so here goes it almost feels like i'm buttering sandwiches when i'm doing this So I don't sew, I say this in every video, so I apologise if you have actually watched other ones. I don't sew, so I find that matte medium is a fairly good alternative because it is archival and it is extremely um, adhesive. So your pages aren't coming loose once this is dried and but you do have about a minute of being able to move things if you feel like you've maybe you're not happy with the position that you've put it in so for the it's a wee bit short for the spine oh i think i'll use this for the spine actually do you know that's about the perfect um, width as well? Let's see. Fair up the want to go. That's probably just just over what I need.
Yes, I would love to be able to sew. It's on the list. But eyelets are first. But it'll probably be at least a good few months, maybe more, um, purely because there is a space issue when it comes to the sewing machine and it's storing it in a manner as well where it's accessible. You know, because if it's put away and not set up, it won't get used. You know how these things work. So, I'm loving this paper. This came from inside a, a book which shall remain nameless. It's gorgeous. I would like the vase to actually sit. How is that? So there's a lovely bud there as well that I'll maybe keep for the middle. I'm going to just put a wee fold in it here. So that's to about there. This paper is absolutely stunning, so it is. I'll read it just a tad long. not thrown any of this paper out. It will be used again somewhere. But ever so slightly. There we go. Oh, that's beautiful. Do you know that's the inside as well? Hmm. Lovely. Oh, that bit I've just cut off actually could be perfect for here. It's just a bit short. This is literally going to be a sliver. That doesn't even need that medium on it. It does feel like the cardboard is losing sturdiness. However, it's because it's wet just now, but once it's dry, the matte medium, the gesso and the Mod Podge combination will make it really quite sturdy. I mean, all right, that was a bad example. <laughs> I did what I did last time. wonder if there's time. No. So, when I made this earlier, this was a pocket. But I put it on upside down, which is why this has ended up a bit of a disaster. Because I want this to be the right hand side. It's an abstract. That's what we'll call it, an abstract. I'm a very um, messy junk journaler. I watch a lot of people and I'm very jealous of their abilities to stay clean. Because I have myself three little pots of colour here, which are made up from white paint, white acrylic paint, gesso, because gesso adds sturdiness, it primes surface, adds tooth, and it will just make this just that little bit more robust. And bronze, burnt sienna and gold. Now I just chose burnt sienna mainly because just to add the kind of shabby chic pink colour to it. However, I do think it'll be okay with this um 
with the blue. So that's that there. It's probably three parts one white paint, one part gesso and there's not a lot. It's basically a squeeze of the burnt sienna in it and it's the same with the gold and the bronze. The bronze has a slightly grey tone to it and the gold is a slight yellowy tone to it. Now I have recently gotten some new paint brushes and I feel like they're life changing. Um, I'm going to start with this first of all, the bronze one, because they actually handle so well and I almost feel like they help you paint faster and they just handle so much better. So I actually might not need to use the burnt sienna one with this. So I almost want to use just the dry brush on it just to, do you see that? Just just needs a tad more down here. I think the way the paper is as well, it, it probably helps, it'll make it easier to do this effect because the paper itself is quite grungy, but I mean it's gorgeous. Let's add more water. I don't want to use too much water because the, the wetter the cardboard will come, the harder it'll be to handle and I'll need to wait for it to dry to continue. Also trying to naturally go. In the one direction that it, it would, if you can imagine it, it would go kind of horizontally from the sides and vertically from the top and bottom. There we go. Might need to wait it a bit if you find that your brush strokes are becoming harsh. It's probably time to add a bit of water because then you're you're, you're not going to have a fading effect. Just I love doing this. I mean, it would be ideal if you could do the whole thing. Now, I'm just doing this because naturally the corners and the sides would be more affected and it would give you a kind of circular motion. I can't resist using my hands every time. It's lovely. Far too much in that one, I need a piece of purple. There we go. It's the water, there was too much water there. Now, because the bronze is in this as well, it will give it a lovely shimmer.
makes it easier to do the, the circle on the oblong than it is on the circle, on the square. Just going to add a wee bit more there. So this is a layering type job as well because you don't want to go in and cover all that. It's easier to add on than it is to take away. Although I do like um, when you're doing abstract art and you're putting it on and you take it away with like sandpaper or covering it up with collage paper or, you know, just layering other paper on top of it just to, and then lifting that off and it takes off like a layer of paint if it's still wet. No, I've never used the digital kit for this but I suppose what I'm doing just now is probably like using one where you're trying to blend it into your substrate they call it just reminds me of chemistry at school when they call it a substrate the substrate is basically the base you're working on which in this case is the cardboard And the good thing about acrylic paint is it dries as well, it dries really fast. So I'll just turn it over, turn it back. It's absolutely gorgeous. Now I want to put just a little bit. I love shimmery book paper to use. Of the highlights. And I went a wee bit too crazy there. It's always rectifiable. Just wet it ever so slightly. So the gold I'm using is the highlights. See, I've overweight that paper there. There we go. I've overdone it in this one here, but that's okay. That's okay. And here, we will need to rectify the bronze. Bit back on. Oh, that's that's a Labrador. Fed up running about and having a wee lie down. She doesn't like the heat. She's understandable because she is a very big black dog. And I've got a little Jack Russell who loves the heat. There. Do you know what? I'm really pleased with this. I don't think it could have really worked out better. Even that, but it's faded a lot. I don't think it was much underneath it anyway. I'll use my fingers to do it. I just like to do the circular motions in the middle because that's naturally the way that the, the aging would occur. Kind of coming in the way. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. Really happy. So, what I'm going to use is going to be experimental, which is never good. Never good. I want to try just the littlest bit of raw umber in with the burnt sienna paint purely because we're using blue so I want to try and reduce the pinky tone. It's 
this is a delicate operation here. So as much as possible, I really, less is more here. Less is so much more. Oh, saying that, I'm going to go and end up having a big splodge, am not I? You're almost like creating a frame with this. Can you see that there? And then, I don't want any gentle here. And that's lovely. Almost afraid to touch it. <clears throat> I want to keep this really minimal. This might be my favourite thing I've ever done for a junk journal. However, there's plenty of time for me to ruin it yet. Like so. Postman must be coming. Although it is results due to do so. I would expect him to be late. Results due for the children. In Scotland. You get them earlier than the English. You set them earlier than the English do. I always think the combination of the three colours as well works well because it adds a bit more if you're just using one colour and putting on top of it then it, it's harder to blend Less is definitely more with this, absolutely. Every time I say that, I end up putting too much on. I do want to put a bit more in here purely because the, there was a tear in the material. Right, this is where I just want to do a bit more blending. Postman must be on his way around, or somebody is chatting the doors to sell or something. There we go. Okay, let's have a look. We'll seal all this with matte medium and it'll um, make it last longer, it, it'll it prevent, you know, it'll give a tiny little bit of water protection to it and it, but it'll help with its sturdiness as well. I'm absolutely loving this. Do you feel it needs a bit more here? And I thought I'd take this bit out of the video, but actually, this is one of the main things that makes it look really great. Great. And what I'll do is I'll come back and I'll do that wee bit there again. So 
actually slightly easier to do the other side because the indents and the grooves are already there for you. I'm going to put a bit of darkness on it, I think. So you, it may it may be beneficial to put on another coat later on once it's dried, um, because it'll probably dry in a bit lighter than it is. want to let it dry for a few minutes before I turn it over. Now this side will be easier because I can just get into the grooves and the texture that's already on it is going to help with the blending effect. It's going to make it look more natural. Been a bit braver this time but it's just because I kind of know what I'm working with now whereas when I did the other side I just wasn't sure I think if I get it too wet, just put the using the piece of paper is helpful. Or if I put too much paint on, like so. Although this piece of paper is getting very dirty. With my trusted knife. Now, Mod Podge is very sticky and it dries. It dries very sticky as well, so I like to put a matte medium over the top of it. But I like the sheen that you get from this on the cardboard, and I also feel that it, it provides a sturdiness I want to get it right in these nooks and crannies because these are the weakest parts of the hole I don't mind about how bumpy and bumpy it is because it just all adds to the effect and it'll dry in smooth anyway. You can also smooth over it with um, sandpaper. Now I am going to try and get this in here. So the Mod Podge is dry, the, I've put matte medium over it, there's still a wee bit of dampness in places. However, it's mostly okay. I put the pocket on upside down, I thought, oh, I'll put vellum on there, so you can see the vase come through and that'll be lovely. No, I keep forgetting, that's how it goes. <laughs> so, anyway 
be honest with you that just adds to the effect anyway and we're going to put this little booklet in here so I have um, used some of the paper that we actually used in the cover I can stay at this place this is a little fruit fruit portrait fruit illustration book um, so I thought that would fit in quite well this is a Laura Ashley pink paper this is part of a map book from the 70s now this little diary page is from 1968 however I've cut that off that's right here I picked up the wrong side here it is here Come on, there it is, I wonder if I couldn't see it, it's tiny, the 29th of December 1968, I found that in a book, I found this in, well I'm sure it'll be in a journal, this is the cover, a, a page outside of a book as well, you know one of the nice, when you just open it up, the nice covers, this is Sea User's Journal, in America there we go so that's obviously came out a magazine or a book that I've had and this is just the back of the papers so the first thing I want to do is I just want to use some print stick and stick this together I'm only using print stick for speed and because it is it's actually just to help me bind it rather than um, to be the adhesive itself. And then what I want to do is I want to stick it into the journal. There we go. Do you know there's a tiny, tiny little bit that's just a wee bit? Can't have it messing up in the home straight. I just want to stick this. There we go. I've got bits of paint and everything else coming off my hands. I'm just going to grab my big binding set. So, um, this is an all. And it's just to poke holes and I got this on Amazon for nine or ten pound with about nine threads as well this is my least favorite part of the job to do I think it'll have to be this grey though I've got this black and I'm wondering no the grey do you know it looks absolutely chaotic on this desk however this is um, my stuff is actually organised it's just when I bring it out to use it until I've finished the job it just I don't put it back Hey, that is a big bow. There we go. Completely the opposite way of what I was planning, but that is fine. I found a bit some some stuff I got from AliExpress. Now I've only bought from there once but I was impressed with the amount of stuff I got for the amount of money I paid I did wait three weeks I'm a bit of a sucker for rounded corners I should keep some of them straight though especially a postcard I mean the postcard comes with straight corners I'm just using print stick for quickness. Normally I would 
use matte medium. I use that for everything, generally. <laughs> yeah, I do think that's a bit better. So it's still a pocket. I'll be a little bit tighter than it was. I think I want to put something in here as well. Well, find this little way that seems to suit the time of the theme of the journal. You know, the kind of still life and fruits. That is like she was she was designed to be put in there really, isn't it? And the last thing is, is I need to create an opening in here. Right, where is the all? Just roughly the middle. Now, if I had Velcro dots, I would actually use that to close it. But I don't. So, um, I'm just going to put some string through actually I think I think string would go well on this so I'm just going to put a little bit of matte medium on the ends of the string well I'll do the other end once I'm in no I'll just put them now okay I'm never sure if it's better to go in from the underneath like so no, I think you better go through from the underneath to over the top, actually. Right, I have a wax seal. Not sure what ones would be best. Um, there's definitely blue tones in there. There you go, I've put one blue and a couple of shades of brown. Three shades of brown. They have a kind of metallic element to them, so. Right. I know on Instagram it looks like they melt fast, but they really, really don't. <laughs> they take a, I mean, they don't take a long time. They take about three or four minutes. And I've done too much as well. Really, two is enough. But I just, I wanted to be sure I cover it. And I'm not very good at getting the leftovers out either. Quite a vibrant blue actually. 